Hello there, welcome back. And um, I hope you have a very good uh, coffee break. <laughs> and um, so what do you do during coffee break? Do you really get a coffee physically or do you just chat with people in the chat? So um, yeah, like uh, now, I uh, guess we're back and then we are very great to have our next speaker, uh, Rush, joining us. Did I pronounced your name correctly? Hello. 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 Um, yeah. So, uh, where are you calling in? <laughs> I'm calling in from uh, from France, uh, the Southern Alps in France. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. I hope the weather in France is great because, uh, yeah, it's very cloudy here in London. So I don't know uh, across the channel. Maybe the weather is a little bit better. <laughs> here's really here's really super. It's uh, summertime here. Uh, we live here in a place where it's uh, 300 days um, a year of sunshine. So uh, no yeah. complaints at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, amazing. So um, you are going to tell us about debugging, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so uh, when your slice is ready, then maybe you can tell us all about debugging. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is the screen on? Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to talk about uh, a package I developed uh, over the uh, the last months, a package called Ice Cream. Um, it's meant to uh, make debugging and benchmarking uh, sweeter. Um, first of all, let me slide, uh, shortly introduce myself. I'm a consultant in the field of logistics simulations, particularly in uh, port automation. Uh, and besides that, I'm also a, uh, an active open source Python developer. Uh, particularly with a, my main pack, package is called Salabim, which is a package to do discrete event simulation uh, for fields like uh, uh, port uh, automation, robotics, uh, materials handling, hospital logistics, warehousing, etc. And here you see a small demo of a, of a container port uh, automation uh, done completely in this Salabim package. And I'm also a developer of a package called Ice Cream. That's the one I want to talk about you today. Um, I want to do uh, to talk a little bit about the inspiration, then about how it can help debugging, how it can help benchmarking, uh, highlight some of the advanced features, how you can customize it, compare it with the package from which I got the inspiration, and then come with some conclusions. Um, the inspiration actually came from a package I found, uh, I think, at the beginning of the year. A package called Ice Cream, this is spelled in the correct way. It's a package by Ansgar Grandseid. It's a nice package, um, but I had some complaints about it. It doesn't have a Pythonic interface, which is quite a nuisance. Um, uh, it also had a, quite a lot of requirements in the way of modules you had to install. Uh, and I found uh, that there were several parts missing, particularly in the field of benchmarking and easy customization. Uh, and then it was actually too much to uh, propose as a, um, uh, as a push request. So then I decided to create my own package and I called it Ice Cream. It's the same spelling, but now it just with a Y. Uh, so that's the, when you see it with a Y, that's, uh, that's my, uh, my package. Oops. Um, as I said, it's debugging and benchmarking. It's first, and debugging is the most, the most important part of it. Um, so debugging, uh, what do people usually do for debugging? Well, they have real debugging tools like the integrated uh, debuggers in IDEs like uh, uh, VS Code or PyCharm, but they're not always use, useful. Uh, so often we also just have a couple of print calls like print A comma B. But uh, if you have many of those, uh, you don't know actually what, what it is, and then you have to add something else. So you have to add, okay, this is A and this is B, etc. And uh, from Python 3.8 on, it's possible to use an, uh, an F string, uh, which is quite useful, but it's not ideal. Uh, still a lot of typing for debugging, and uh, you also miss about some, uh, some functionality. So what about just saying why A comma B? Well, that's actually what, uh, what ice cream does. Um, 
And I just wanted to show you that uh, by looking at a, um, at a small program, uh, a, small a small program that's supposed to remove all the elements that are less than or equal to one of a given list. So this is list, and we have this little program for EL in L. If it's, then we remove the package, and then we print the, uh, the list. So if we run this, and let me just do it in real time, but the output is wrong. You see several, uh, several uh, items are still uh, uh, not left out co correctly. Uh, so now I just wanted to show you that in, uh, in reality. So if we just run this program, You will see the wrong the wrong output. Well, what most people do then in those cases, for instance, they just put a uh, they put a, a breakpoint here and then they run the debugger. It's a little bit slow, I think, because of the connection. Uh, oh, well, then you turn, you're, you're in the debugger, and then you can just see uh, see the elements. It doesn't really work at the moment, but you are familiar with that, I suppose. The disadvantage of that is that you can't really uh, see the context. So you could just see a number of uh, 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 number of variables, but not in time. So what a lot of people then do, they just say, okay, I just print the L here, and let's at least check that we only have values that are indeed less than or equal to one, because that might be also already a problem. If we just run this, I hope that will work now. So we see here the uh, the elements. We can and now it's already difficult because we don't know actually which print statement is what, what which is which. So we have it possibly just add here line three, and we add here line number number five, and then we can at least see already a little bit more of where where uh, the problem is and. Uh, so we'll see that in a minute. Oh, I've made a mistake. This one here. Still an hour. Sorry about that. It's very slow. Sorry about that. Uh, we are in a very remote place here where the internet is uh, not that stable. Uh, okay, now we can see at least the, the, the line number and we could see that the elements are indeed correct. I'm not going into all the details, but now I just wanted to show you what you can do with the ice cream. You can just, uh, we just add here the line from ice cream input Y, and then we see here Y element. Y E L. Let's say we also want to add the, the list itself. And here we say uh, also element and the list. And there we go. And now you will see uh, an output which is a bit similar to this one, but you will also see the uh, already that uh, the elements are uh, mentioned. So it's the element and the EL and L is in the, in the output. So you here see EL is and L is. And now we would like to see the line number. And then all we have to do is add dot show line number. 
number is two. And then you will see immediately uh, on top of the uh, this, this output, you will see the uh, the uh, the line number, which is used very you can be very useful information. You see the line number, and if we put this into a, into a, um, a function, for instance, then you will also see the function name. If it's even in another in another file, you will also see the file. Uh, um, so let's go back to the presentation. Uh, well. Ice cream also formats the, uh, uh, the the output nicely. So here, for instance, depending on the line length, if I have the squares here, uh, if it, the normal is it like that, and I have a, when I have a short, very short line length, it will just format correctly. It's uh, which is done by via the pprint uh, package. Oops. Um, what else can we do? We can also just say, okay, we have a we have a function, and I want us to to trace actually what the, what goes into the function, what goes out of the function, and what we just then do, we just add the uh, a decor decorator uh, sorry decorator y. Then we say, okay, we add we we just call this function, and then we can just print the output. Uh, so here you see actually the effect of this is actually that uh, the output just says, okay, this is called with the parameter two, this one, and it returns four. Uh, and you can also see some debugging information. Um, if you go to benchmarking, um, benchmarking is quite often done with specialized tools like TimeIt, and there are, there are many others. But if you just want to do something simple, you want to have also the debugging functionality, Ice Cream could uh, could maybe help with that. And you could do that with a with decorator. Let me just show you that uh, in a real example. Let's let's say we have this function. It's a function that sorts uh, ten to the power of i uh, uh, numbers. That's not really very uh, very important. Uh, so we just add the from ice cream import y, and then we make it short a short uh, uh, test run for i in range seven. Let's do short. I. That's all. Then we add the, the decorator to get the, the debugging information. So here we see actually now an, an overview of the, the timings. So for, with, with seven, uh, 10 to the power seven, we see it will take 0.6 minutes. Uh, what we can now do, we can say, okay, we don't want to have all that information. That information that shows the uh, the enter is not very important. So we just say show enter. It's also a demonstration how to set attribute, attributes. Show enter is false. And then we just run it again. And then you'll see a very nice overview of the uh, the timing of this of the uh, of this function. You can see it, it's a, it's an exponential uh, uh, square, uh, an exponential uh, equation. Um, what we can also do is as a context manager, and in that case, I just do this. I have another example here, just a built up a. a, a a list of um, 10 to the power of 8, I think, elements. Um, add the, um, the ice cream again. And now all, all I have to do is with, with y. Petal. And then I can run it.
And then you'll see uh, it enters here, the, uh, the function. Will take a while, and then you see for four seconds it is it is ready. Uh, so this, and then you can just use that, of course, and print it and all that. Uh, there's even another possibility. You can also do this a second counter. It's also part of instead of part of ice cream. Now I just don't do don't do this, but I do this. Uh, I said I dot delta is zero. It's a kind of timer, and I must just say print. Delta and the nice thing of this is then I, Delta is just an ordinary uh, variable you can put it into a uh, into an array for instance or do whatever and then uh, make a nice graph with it uh, that's uh, easy to uh, to handle uh, so here you see the time uh, the time now uh, And uh, for benchmarking, you can just also just just only only at the time that can be can be useful information, particularly when it's very long. If it takes minutes, for instance, with a, with a response from a uh, from a website or something like that. So you just say, okay, show time is true, and then you say uh, hello, and you get the uh, the output. Um, you can also do um, relative times. So you can add the, the relative time. So here you can see I do show time and show delta, and the delta is that that, that counter. And then you can see it relative to re relative to either the start of the program or relative to the time I set here. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple of things to how to uh, to change. Uh, oops. To change an attribute and all that, uh, let me just go back to this example. Here you see already uh, that we've added a, uh, a line number. Uh, let's just say we also we don't want to have that same prefix. Uh, we always say a prefix is. Some, uh, some examples and then uh, I could for standard. Normally the output goes to. Uh, uh, to standard error, but they can also, also stand it to standard out. But you can't really see uh, when you run it on their VS Code what I'm doing, but uh, uh, you can send it to a you can you can send it to file. You can also send it to a logger to a logger, uh, which can be very useful. Uh, um, so you now you see here indeed that the, the prefix has, has, uh, has changed and uh, we have sent it to an output. Uh, let's suppose we have all done, we've done this and now we have debugged it and we know how to handle it. Oh, I didn't tell the, uh, the, the trick to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to correct this. The trick is actually to make a copy here of, of L and then it's okay. Uh, so then it will work. Um, but if we just say okay, we we have done, and uh, we don't need the to see the uh, uh, the debugging information anymore, we can just say enabled. Enabled is false. And if you run it now, you will see there will be absolutely no uh, no output. Uh, Then you can just only just print the information, so not anymore the uh, the output uh, information. Um, I just want to do something else. This is a small program to to show you some uh, some of the output specification. So if we run this one, I've set here a, a line length of 160, so that means that this will all fit. If I just say okay, I have some more squares to print like this. Then you will see the output will change because this doesn't fit anymore on uh, on one line, and then you will see we put two lines. If we don't have even more, let's say we have seventy of those squares to print. Then you will see that uh, it's more lines, and then actually it splits up squares into different uh, various lines. Uh, 
and that's uh, can be extremely uh, powerful. You can also show tracebacks. Uh, so then, if you just call it from a certain point, you can see actually from where it's called. It can be useful to track uh, uh, calls from, and you don't know exactly where it came from. Um, there are a lot of uh, advanced features. There are a whole, a whole list of them. Uh, um, and you can also use, for, for each one, you have a, a shortcut. So instead of line length, for instance, you can say LL, or if instead of prefix, you can say P. Uh, and uh, these things are, uh, you can just uh, add them to your, uh, to your debugger. Nice thing of ice cream is that you can customize it with a, uh, with a JSON file. Uh, you just put the JSON file in the current directory or in the site package folder where uh, the package is when the program is installed. And then uh, you could just say, for instance, this is my setting. And you say the line length is 160 and compact has to be true. And then this becomes part of the of the package. So it looks like this is actually a part of the, the settings of the, of the program itself. Uh, and you could do it, of course, then on a, on a uh, project base by the, uh, putting it in the pro proper current directory. Uh, installation is very simple, just with pip install or get it from, uh, from GitHub. And uh, one of the nice things is this ice cream, in, the ice cream is just one file, and the file ice cream.py. And if you put it in your current directory, uh, there, and um, it just works. There are absolutely no requirements and uh, no other files required. Which makes installation extremely, uh, extremely easy, uh, of course. A um, little bit about the uh, technical information. Technical information. Um, ice cream is, in contrast to most packages uh, that you see in Python, is one big source file. Uh, in order to avoid uh, dependencies, uh, it it includes actually the, the complete source of. Uh, the AST tokens module, the ex executing module, and the pprint module 3.8, that's for shorting of dictionaries. And I've made some special code to make it run under 2.7 and uh, 3.6 and higher up. And uh, to give you an impression, the package itself is actually something around 800 lines of code. And the rest is actually, the whole package is 3,000 lines of code. So these, these um, these modified sources are actually about 2,200 uh, lines of code. And then just a short word of comparison with the uh, uh, with my inspiration package, uh, ice cream with an I. Uh, what ice cream does, ice cream does the uh, color, the, the output. So in ice cream, you will see in this case, you, see, you will see the, the, the strings in, in, in color, in blue, uh, usually. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, that's particularly because the in inclusion of that package would be make it big. And I personally don't like all those colors that much. Uh, it's a personal uh, uh, preference. Uh, ice cream with, a, with an I doesn't have any benchmarking facility. Uh, my package uh, has a very Pythonic interface, as you also just uh, saw uh, in my uh, in my examples. Uh, my package is uh, highly customizable. Um, you can even make new, um, uh, let's say, Ys, the one, one those uh, those uh, those debugging states by forking and cloning. It's, 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 it's really very sophisticated. I don't know whether a lot of people are going to use it, but if you need it, it's very, very useful. Uh, you can use uh, uh, my package as decorator and context manager. Um, what you can't do with ice cream with I is uh, control the, the pprint parameters, which you can do with my, uh, my package for sure. And um, I have some more extensive tests and uh, use another package. Uh, I use PyTest and uh, I assume that I use this uh, unit test. So to conclude, I would say um, ice cream might uh, make debugging and uh, benchmarking uh, a bit uh, a bit sweeter. Uh, so if you want to uh, to uh, to use it, just go to uh, my GitHub uh, address, uh, address, address, and um, then I just want to say thank you, and you can always contact me at this uh, email address. Thank you. Bye bye.
That's good. That's really good to see uh, how this is done and uh, very impressive uh, live Thank coding you. as well. I think it's very brave. Like I, I'm so scared to do live coding. I think this is really, really cool demonstration. So actually, people uh, uh, have a question to ask. Okay. So Super. yeah. So what about a very long list? So this question come up when you were uh, showing something. I think uh, I forgot which part, but it was uh, something that you're you're demonstrating. And then uh, so or are the kinds of structures. So how are they display? I think it's like really related to like if you're using pandas, like what should you do? <laughs> yeah, um, well, uh, actually, um, that's all done by uh, by the pprint module, and pprint can uh, can do all those, those things. So very long lists are indeed uh, split up in in, several, in a, the number of lines, uh, as you saw already with that one example I showed you. Where I put seventy squares instead of the ten. Um, <laughs> Uh, data frames in pandas are also handled by uh, by pprint, so they will be uh, quite nicely uh, uh, formatted. Um, the way pprint actually works, uh, so uh, which is very popular pa package, uh, as you might know. Uh. Yeah, I use pprint all the time because uh, in my work I do have a lot of a dictionary that is very nested. So that's yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. It's and one, one of the one of the the, uh, the weird things of pprint is by by default, pprint sorts the direct the, the dictionaries. I don't know whether you ever ever noticed that. Uh, but uh, from uh, Python three point six on, dictionaries are sorted them sorted by themselves. So therefore, I in ice cream disable by default this uh, this this sorting, which can be very useful actually. Yeah. Yeah, so there's an other question. So usually uh, execution is slower in debug mode. So um, what about ice cream? Oh, I, I think it means, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. does it slow down the code as much? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, but of course, you also have to look at some uh, some output. Uh, but uh, it's, it's more or less the same as the print statement. Uh, um, uh, the only thing I can add to that um, which is uh, which might be uh, important if you have disabled uh, ice cream and you still have the the statements, then it slows it down as well. But I've made some special provisions, so then the effect the effect of that is very, actually not very big. Uh, so uh, yes, it will slow it down, and uh, but well, you also have to look at it. So I don't see that as really a, a major problem. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, Rudd. Uh, this what is a, was a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Enjoy yeah. So day. yeah, sure. And then uh, if people have more questions, they can of course uh, find you in the chat, I guess, in Matrix. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye.